Hey everybody, here's another video on Stardew Valley with a few more tips. This time we'll be talking about the Stardew Valley Fair and trying to finish the fishing quest that we got from the last video. Hope you enjoy! Uh, let's see, one week from today, we're holding the Stardew Valley Fair. Oh, the Stardew Valley Fair, that's where you set up your Grange with all your expensive items. Twice now, I have accidentally forgotten to take things out of my Grange, so that I lost legendary fish, I lost gems, I lost iridium quality uh, crafting goods, I've lost iridium quality... Uh, not iridium, but gold quality foraging. Yeah, basically everything that I had in there disappeared so I got everything from the vendor in there so I've stopped doing it I'll go to the fair and then just go home I'll put a diamond or something in there just so I put something there and I think you end up getting like ninth place even though there are four people <laughs> um, but you still end up getting some star some star tokens or star tickets or whatever they are and uh, then I just go and gamble them away at the guy who tells you to choose the green or orange. Yeah, so. Your best bet with that, if you don't know, is to use two fishing items of high, high quality. So either gold or legendary. Legendary, it doesn't matter what quality they are, as long as they're legendary. Uh, let's see. So the glacier fish is one. The angler is one. The actual legend is one, and there may be only three legendary. I thought there were four, but there may be only three. Any one of those three, no matter what quality they are, I would suggest using those, and then a high quality other fish, like an octopus or a puffer fish if you can find it or catch it. Um, those are, are decent. Then of course you want, you want basically two of everything here. But the problem is there's only nine spots on the range. So what I did is I put two high quality farming, two high quality foraging, two high quality fishing, two high quality uh, animal products, like either an iridium egg and an iridium milk or uh, a gold piece of wood, or not wood, wool, <laughs> or uh, something high quality milk or cheese or something like that and then one piece like I used a diamond and that was well-rounded as well as high quality stuff and I won first place every time so that's a little helpful hint for when the Stardew Fair comes around Now, I've seen it said a lot of places that to have high quality items from your animals, you have to feed them grass every day, but I don't find that to be true. What I find actually is during winter, when they're cooped up in their pens and they're eating nothing but hay, I get more iridium that way than I do any other time. So I don't see a big difference in the quality when it comes to grass versus hay. Maybe it's just because I'm not paying enough, close enough attention, but I just don't see it. Another thing I noticed is that people say that, oh, basic fertilizer and speed grow and all this other stuff actually makes your crops better quality, but I used quality fertilizer on those three, pan three uh, hops that I just picked up, or artichoke I just picked up, and as you see, I only got two gold and 
one regular. So I don't see a big difference in that either. Is there something that I may be doing wrong? If somebody can leave it in the comments, I don't know if maybe there's some kind of trick to it. But I just haven't noticed a difference in the uh, basic quality fertilizer versus the high quality fertilizer versus any just growing them outright. Another thing, most fruits and vegetables can be pickled. And believe me, sometimes it's worth your time to pickle rather than to make wine. Pickling can only be done at regular level. There's no iridium, there's no gold, there's no silver. But some of it can be worth some serious cash and some of it can be done in a matter of four days. So like the red cabbage that I had here, the pickling I did with 12 of them, I think I got like four grand off of it. It was pretty, pretty lucrative. And I think it only took like eight days or something like that. So that's not too bad. That's not too bad for eight days worth of work, four grand. So, but that's, as I said, that's only if you decide to take the artisan skill. So that's something to remember. try fishing here again this is where it shows the uh, on the wiki when it talks about the river this is where it shows the icon at for what the river is so I'm gonna try it here and I'll waste the day with it and if I don't catch anything well that's just life So I was saying earlier that I don't use uh, lures any longer, and that's because, I mean, I'm at level 10, my bar is pretty high, uh, fish don't often get away from me unless they're a high level. Um, some of the more difficult fish, octopus, squid, that kind of stuff. Even when I'm trying to catch, well, even when I'm trying to get the treasure chest that you see pop up every now and then, they don't get away from me very often because I'm so high. If you want to find fish fishing easier, I'll be honest with you, the lore that I found was the best was the, I believe it was the cork bobber? No, I'm sorry, it was the trap bobber. And it causes fish, fish to escape slower when you aren't really them in. Basically, when your green bar is not near them and say you were to ignore fish it would actually make the line that you see on the right that turns green and yellow and all the different colors go down slower so say if I were to ignore this fish and go up here see how fast that line goes down if you use the trapper bobber the trap bobber it actually makes that line 
slow down from going down so fast. I found that to be one of the greatest helps in leveling your fishing skill that you can possibly have. Um, some people may feel that one of the lures that makes your bar taller may help, and it may, that may help too, but anything that slows the fish down to me seems like it's a better deal. Yeah, as you can see, it's 2.30 now, 2.40 now, and uh, I have yet to catch even one tiger trout. Um, kind of sucks. There are lures that will actually help with bite rate and all that other stuff, but like I said, I just don't even bother with lures anymore. They're just not worth it to me. Uh, just for the fact of they either cost a lot if you try to buy them from Willy, or they take a lot of your resources. Like the trap bobber I was talking about earlier, it actually takes basic fertilizer, I think it was. A copper bar, a copper bar and sap. That's such an odd combination to me. Yeah, the treasure hunter takes two gold bars. Why would fish even be interested in that? <laughs> you know? That just seems weird. And this here, it slightly increases the bite rate when fishing. I don't see that big of a difference. I honestly don't. Um, maybe instead of catching one fish every in-game 10 minutes, you may catch like two to three fish every in-game in 10 minutes. For two iron bars, or for however, many, however much Willie's selling them for, it doesn't seem lucrative with how cheap they are to sell. You don't make a lot of money selling them, so it's not really worth it. This is the one that I don't well, I mean, I kind of understand it, but at the same time, I really don't. Increases the chance of finding treasures when fishing. However, fish aren't crazy about the taste, which means you're going to get a lower bite rate. But when you do get a bite, you're having a larger chance of finding treasure chests. But if you're not getting any bites, you're not going to be getting any treasure chests. It's, it's mm, I don't even know the word for it at this point. My brain is shut down. <laughs> I'll only be doing this till 7 o'clock because that was what the wiki said their timetable was, 6 a.m. to 7 p.m., so there's really no point in me to continue after 7 p.m. Oh, there's actually might be one. Nope, it's a salmon. I like to keep the fish in the middle of the bar just in case they make sudden moves like the salmon did. I don't, I don't think I've ever gone two straight days without catching what I wanted. Usually if I do stick this out, I've caught... I've long caught my needed amount by then. I don't think I've ever had to go through this before, especially when I've been doing it correctly. There was a time when I was trying to fish for octopus and it was like the middle of fall or spring or something like that, but it was a different season when they actually come up. Which I think it's kind of unfair that the game asks for something that's not even in season, but that's what you have treasure chests and everything else for, so you can find stuff that is of rare value and hold on to it when you have quests. And the quests aren't something you have to do. You do get money for it. The mayor will occasionally send you money saying you're the citizen of the month or the citizen citizen of the season or some shit. And he'll end up giving you cash for helping people out. 
that's pretty nice, especially when you're just starting. Not to mention the cash that you get from the citizen themselves for doing it. Oh, he finally got a tiger trout. Look at that. Um, I would not recommend doing quests for Sandy. She's the person over in uh, Calico Desert. Unless you're wanting to up your affection with her. Every quest you do does up your affection with that person. But when it comes to Sandy, if you're not doing it for the affection, you will lose money. Anything she asks for is under 500 gold. To get to Calico Desert, you have to spend 500 gold, not to mention the time, effort, and the fact that if it's a crop, you could have sold that crop and made money without having to spend the 500 gold and all of that. You do not recoup the money that you spend to get out to her from her. So if you're not interested in affection from her, don't bother with her quests. There's just no point. And the reason that I'm going to do this up until right at 7 o'clock is because, as you see here, sometimes you catch what you want when you least expect it, and sometimes they get more frequent at the time when they're supposed to be done. And I think that's part of the game screwing and celebrating you at the same time. <laughs> like, it's... Okay, see, so now it's after 7 o'clock. I'll try a couple more times just to see if maybe... I might actually run over to that spot that's bubbling. As most people know, when you see bubbles like that, supposedly you're going to have a better bite rate. I'll just keep fishing this spot until it's done and then I'm going to quit. Oh, sometimes the game will wait until the last minute of the time that that fish is supposed to be out to give you what you need and sometimes you get screwed like I did I needed three trout fish I only got two so <laughs> but them's the breaks when you're doing quests like this you know you can't always have exactly what the villager needs and I'm not sweating it like like I said I'm so far in the into this playthrough that not being able to fulfill one person's quest isn't going to affect my affection with that person and it's obviously not going to affect my money so I mean I've got over five million almost six so it's not that big of a deal to me it was just something to kind of give an overall feel of what the game is about and the stuff you can do once you've hit max level and everything okay I'm bored of this <laughs> If you're wondering about my casks and why I'm not going down and checking them on a regular basis is because I just refilled them on the 4th, I think it was, or the 6th, something like that. But it was enough to where I know, <laughs> I know that they're not going to be done for quite a while, at least well into spring of next year. So there's really no point in continuously going down there and looking to see if they're done yet. So that's going to do it for this video. I hope you all liked it. We've made a few changes to the end card. Let me know in the comments what you think. Special thanks to Taylor, also known as Travelsome, for this beautiful end card and banner. You can find a link to their Twitter in the description below. See you all next week.